Going into the 2024 NFL Draft, there really wasn't a lot of dialogue surrounding the running back class, and that primarily was due to the fact that a lot of people didn't really view this group as anything spectacular. It was one that some people thought lacked a true top dog, some people said that there wasn't any real firepower or star power in this class, and others just looked at the top guys as players who would just fit well in a committee but never truly be like the guy in a running back room. However, just a few weeks into the season, we're already starting to see some of those rookies really take over, and I would even argue at least one day three pick has cemented himself as the best running back on his team. So I want to dive into the tape this week and take a look at two of those running backs and talk about why I think these two have star potential. That's not to say that there aren't other backs from this class that have it, because I'm sure there are. Someone like Jonathan Brooks, who was the first overall running back taken, hasn't even seen the field yet because he's recovering from an injury. But these two guys I want to talk about are ones that I think can be superstars, and one of them I think should be the starting running back for his team sooner rather than later. The first running back I want to take a look at here is Braylon Allen, who was my number one running back in the class and I think can be an absolute superstar. He's currently the youngest player in the NFL. He's PFF's number one graded running back, which I'm not a huge PFF guy, but you know, notable. Uh, but more importantly, he's averaging 5.1 yards per carry on 19 attempts for 96 yards. He's averaging 4.11 yards after contact per attempt, which is top five in the league. And all that is being done as RB2 in New York and as the youngest player in the league. And while I don't think he's necessarily going to overtake Brees Hall as New York's lead back, I do think his usage is going to continue to increase. And I think he would start on a lot of football teams right now. So let's go ahead and take a look at the tape and see what he's doing so well through three weeks and why exactly he is averaging 5.1 yards per carry and he is so good after contact. All right, first play here, taking a look at the Jets-Patriots game. We'll go ahead and let old man Rodgers snap this football. And you see right away, Allen's one-on-one -on -one with this linebacker, number 50. He's going to do a great job of just setting his feet and cutting up field. Nice little arm tackle, or nice little arm tackle break, rather. You know, it's really hard to bring this guy down when he's got a full head of steam. And what I really like here is you'll see he presses this guard really close, and that is going to get this safety up here to cut down and that's also going to get this linebacker thinking he needs to cut to the left because of that Allen is going to be able to cut this up to the right behind Simpson here and that's going to help him pick up some extra yards now the linebacker does do a good job of reading and you know handling it it's Jelani Tavai he's one of the better run defending linebackers in the sport but even then Allen once he makes that cut is able to carry Tavai for an extra two maybe three yards there because his legs are so powerful. I really love the footwork from Allen for a bigger back. Like that right there is awesome. The way he cuts inside, you know, a lot of guys his size are probably just going to try to lower this shoulder on initial contact and run through that linebacker. But Allen, he gets a little creative with it. That sidestep breaks the arm tackle, gets upfield after pressing the line and just does an awesome job of picking up seven or eight here. I don't remember exactly how much. But just a, a really, really nice run for the rookie. You know, he's the youngest player in the NFL, and he runs the ball like a 10-year veteran playing in the 1990s. This run right here is beautiful. So you bring the tight end in motion to serve as the lead blocker here as a pseudo fullback because the Jets unfortunately cut Nick Bowden uh, this past offseason. So you're going to get the fullback, the tight end, whatever you want to call him, leading you through the hole here, and Allen's just got to get up field. He's going to have Daniel Ukuwale, who we talked about last week in my Keon White video a little bit. Really good run defender. He's going to shed this guard. Allen, because he is running like a damn locomotive, just breaks this arm tackle, keeps trucking. And speaking of trucking, ends up running through this uh, DB here down at the end. So what ends up happening here is I really like the, the running from Allen. He's going to press this inside, right? When he takes his hand off, he is following the tight end perfectly, and he's going to run to the inside, which causes Jelani Tavai, who's coming from about here, to step down. And he's thinking Allen wants to take this route. So if he wants to take this route, if Tavai can step down, get low, and stall this tight end, then Allen's going to get swallowed up, and he thinks his big boy Ukuwale, or maybe number 50 over here, can, you know, come in and clean up the tackle. So Allen breaks that arm tackle, 
tight end does a really nice job of taking care of Tavai, and he's going to get downfield, run over this corner. Now, doesn't get much more than that. I think it's a corner. Maybe it's a safety. Either way, runs over the DB. Doesn't end up getting much more than that because you get a nice hustle play on the back end from 50. That's still a really, really solid run. All right, this play right here is a heartbreaker, to say the least. Go ahead and let it play. So they're going to bring the tight end in motion here in just a moment to serve as the lead blocker once again. And the main reason I wanted to show this play is this cut. This cut is something beautiful. I mean, this is a 230, 240 pound running back cutting on a dime like that. W what a move. I mean, that is that is as smooth as it gets. I know I just keep replaying this cut. Good Lord. Just absolutely beautiful. The footwork from Allen is incredible. So this is where it gets sad, right? Allen's doing a great job. He presses the tight end here, which is going to bait this defender inside and it's also going to debate another defender back here inside and we'll talk about that in a minute which is great because if he baits these guys inside then he can cut back and look at all that green that's a whole lot of green grass however gets tripped up just simply gets tripped up there's only so much you can do you know you can anticipate a lot of things as a running back you can see a lot of things as a running back alan's got really good vision you can't anticipate that. You, you simply cannot anticipate your lead blocker getting bitched to that degree. I mean, that is just super, super unfortunate. You know, great play by 50. And what ends up happening, just to give you an idea, if we can get to the right spot here, is the leg gets kicked out from underneath the tight end and it trips up Allen and he falls forward. Again, with all this green grass in front of him, he's got 21 to beat. We saw he can run through 21 with a full head of steam, no problem. You know, that's not a huge concern. Now, I was talking about the other defender. This is great stuff here. You can see perfectly here, right? 50 is pursuing to the inside, and Duggar down here is pursuing to the inside, or to the outside, rather. The, I don't know why I said the inside. The outside. Very clearly to the outside, to the sideline. And then Allen is going to cut this upfield and just hope he can take off. Again, has 21 to beat. He did that earlier you know in the last play we just watched he has no problem doing that instead he gets tripped up has all that green grass in front of him probably takes this in for a touchdown if not a touchdown because again he is a bigger back he doesn't have the best speed in the world if 21 takes a really good angle and gets his ankle or something this goes from you know about a 10 yard carry to getting them inside the five getting them inside the 10 you know we could be looking at this as like holy shit what an impressive touchdown from a guy in his third game but instead, I'm sitting here saying, man, what an impressive touchdown this could have been from a guy in his third game. And the only difference in it is, is the tight end who somehow ends up back in his three-point stance. I'm just now noticing that. That's funny. That's really funny. This tight end got embarrassed so hard that he's setting up for the next play. That's, that's tough. That's why I employ a fullback, folks. A fullback doesn't have that happen to him. Should have kept Nick Bowden. All right, here we've got a play from Allen against the Titans uh, last week. So you're going to see once he takes this hand off, 56 and 53 are keyed in on the run. These are the two guys he's got to worry about. If he can get them, he can get to the third level. We'll have to deal with the DB. We're not worried about DBs. This is Braylon fucking Allen. He's going to run through a DB, right? So what he does is he presses the line close. He takes off to the right and ends up pressing the line. That pulls both of these guys in. And then what's going to happen is because of that, you have a double team block here and a double team block here. One of these guys can climb to the second level, take care of these linebackers and clear things out. Now, unfortunately, you see number 49 over here. He's got his man beat, so he's going to be the one spoiler alert to end up making this play and keeping it from being a huge gain. But there's only so much Braylon Allen can control. If his guy on the left gets beat, there's only so much he can do. So you see he presses that to the line. You see 76 start to get upfield. He's going to take care of that. 53, he's going to get swallowed up. You know, these two linebackers, they are officially out of the play. So now Allen's got to cut across and make it into this gap. I don't know why I drew it like that. He's going to want to cut it across and make it into this gap, right? You want to try to beat this DB however you can. Ideally, if this guy's not getting blocked, you're going to be right here and you can either cut left, cut right, whatever is easier. And the crazy thing is with Allen, with his footwork, he can do that. Or if he just wants to be a big man, he can say, screw you, I'm running right through you. 
So you see he makes this cut. Nice little jump cut across the line here. And now you've got 49 coming in. These linebackers are taking care of 28 or 26. I can't quite tell. The Titans jersey font is stupid. Uh, they're crashing down. Allen's going to get upfield. Ends up making more out of this run than it should be, especially with 49 crashing in. A lot of backs getting dropped behind the line of scrimmage. He turns this into a positive game. All right, let's take a look at a Braylon Allen touchdown. See what that looks like, huh? So you see, this is this is a really nice run. Uh, we'll break it down here in a second. I just want to show it off because he's got the juice. You know, he's a bigger back. He's got some juice. So right off the bat, we're running the ball to the right here. You see the lane here between the tackle and the tight end. You've got a double team here on Jeff Simmons. You've got a linebacker to deal with, and you've got a DB to deal with. So the way they're going to take care of this, you beat the double team. 78 looks to get upfield. We'll go ahead and rewind that just a tick so you can see. 78 wants to get upfield and take care of the linebacker. The linebacker splits into the backfield. He's not interested in waiting. So then 78's a little confused. Eliza Vera Tucker, who is supposed to be taking care of Jeff Simmons here, he's going to get a little bit confused. And at the last minute, he's going to turn his head and try to take care of this linebacker. Well, you're leaving Jeff Simmons one-on-one -on -one with your running back, buddy. Like, yeah, he's got a little bit of chip help here, but he's past this tackle. You know, Jeff Simmons is swallowing up most running backs here, not Braylon Allen. He breaks an arm tackle and then he adjusts his feet, does a nice little hop here uh, to take on. I believe this is a Monty Hooker one on one. It is 37. That's a Monty Hooker. Uh, he takes on Hooker here one on one and does a great job of just cutting to the outside, switches his directions from going north to south to going east to west or west to east, I guess. Um, and then he's able to turn this upfield and score the touchdown. He's able to outrun Hooker. Also does a little bit of uh, hand fighting here towards the end. Rewind to show that. Didn't rewind far enough. So Hooker tries to get his hand in there. Allen just swipes him away and ends up in the end zone. Just a nice run. A little bit of miscommunication on the, on the offensive line. But it doesn't matter. Allen is simply better. All right, and this last one against the Niners. Garbage time. Game's over. I just want to show off some footwork here. This is some fancy cooking. So you see right away penetration on the interior. Allen's going to bounce this to the outside. He's got Gibson here one on one with a DB. And that's not going to work. Gibson's a little little dude. You know, he, he's, he's not a big body. He's not a great blocker. Very quick. Good return, man. You know, he, he's, he's got his skills. Blocking's not one of them. So this DB is going to slip him get inside. And Allen, instead of having green grass to run north to south, or to run north, rather, uh, he's going to have to cut this nice little juke here and then turn up field and end up getting tackled at the ankles. But this is a, a really nice run, really nice juke there. Big guy shouldn't be able to move like he does. That's the point of this play. Shouldn't be able to move like he does. And the other running back I want to talk about today is Bucky Irving of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. And look, we're three weeks into the season. I usually try to avoid going back on draft takes or being like, yeah, you know what? I was wrong. That's on me. Until at least a year into a player's career, if not at least halfway through a first season, right? However, with Irving three weeks into the season, I I kind of see the vision. Like, I, I see why so many people liked him as much as they did. That's not to say I didn't like Bucky Irving. I did. I thought he was fine enough. I had a third round grade on him. He was somebody that I saw as a member of a committee. Ironically, a lot of the consensus assumptions that people had about the class at large that I talked about at the start of the video, that was kind of how I felt about Irving. You know, somebody that could be a member of a committee, be a solid contributor, but never be a true lead back, never be a true number one, never get the bulk of the carries. And here we are three weeks into the season, and I want to sing an entirely different tune. Not only do I think he should get the bulk of the carries in, in Tampa, I think he is substantially better than Rashad White. If you watch my Tampa Bay Buccaneers draft grade video, you know that I didn't love the Bucky Irving pick for the Bucks because I thought it was kind of redundant with Rashad White. But here we are, three weeks into the season, and Bucky Irving is playing much better than Rashad White. Irving's averaging 6.2 yards per carry, which is second in the NFL. Rashad White is near dead last with 2.1 yards per carry, which is really tough. But don't just take my word for it. Head coach of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, Todd Bowles, said that Bucky Irving 
has definitely earned more reps after the way he played against the Denver Broncos. But anyways, let's take a look at the film and see why Bucky Irving has me and Todd Bowles both feeling like he deserves to get the ball a little bit more and probably start over Rashad White. So fun thing about running the football, not every play has to be super flashy. Sometimes it's just making the most out of what bad blocking gives you. And that's what we're going to see on this play. So right away, once this ball is snapped, they're going to bring a man in motion before it's snapped to serve as the lead blocker. That's Payne Durham. God love him. Purdue legend. Mike Allstott enjoyer. He's going to hold up his block here on the outside. They bring Kate Otten as the lead blocker. And this is where the issue on this play happens. These two right here. We rewind it a little bit. I got too excited about Payne Durham. 77's on the ground. If your guard is on the ground on a run play, bad things are going to happen. Because now 55 over here, he doesn't have anybody blocking him. Got 49 here who Kate Otten's got to get up to. He's got to change his path a little bit to move around this fucking guard who's on the ground now. So this messes it up not only for 77, but for Kate Otten, and also for Bucky Irving, who's got to navigate this bullshit. So now Kate Otten is going to get up to his guy, and 77, to his credit, does stand up, or starts to stand up. The problem is Bucky Irving's already here. You know, he doesn't have time to wait for 77 to get up off his ass and block his guy. So he's got to figure out what the plan of attack here, or what the plan of attack is here, rather. And he's just going to run. Like, he just gets upfield, and I love that. That's exactly what he needs to do here. None of this fancy shit. None of this, oh, I'm going to bounce this outside. No. No, get upfield. If everything is broken, if everything is busted, you get upfield and you get as many yards as you can. And Bucky does a great job of doing that. He shoots up to where his blocker is standing. You know, where he actually has a blocker that's upright. And he takes advantage of what he can. Now, looking at this from the screenshot, there is green here, but immediately this guy can close that off. So he does a great job of getting upfield, doing something, making something out of what could have been a lot worse. I just love the awareness here because like this, this right here is tough. And, and I don't even want to blame Kate Otten as much because he had to navigate. You know, he had to get around Dum Dum falling over here. And he ends up still setting a nice block. He gets low. Never mind. He goes completely off the linebacker. <laughs> I wanted to give him credit, but nope. He slips off the linebacker and the linebacker uh, Singleton is the one who ends up making the tackle. Oh boy. Poor Bucky Irving. But hey, this is this is a good job. Like I said, just get upfield. Just do what you can. That's a perfect example of just doing what you can in spite of what's happening around you. All right, we're going to look at this one a little bit differently. Uh, we're going to start by looking at the sideline angle, and then we'll actually break it down from the end zone angle. Reason I want to start from the sideline, here's Irving lined up at receiver. This is a really creative play call. They're going to bring him in motion and then hand the ball off to him, and he's going to end up taking this for a massive gain. So they line him up out there, a little two-back uh, action here, hand it off to him, and he's off to the races. Big 30-yard pickup. Now, Irving isn't the fastest guy in the world, so he is going to get caught. Uh, I don't think he would have had a touchdown here had he not gotten caught. No, because I doubt Mike Evans is going to be able to play this perfectly. Although, I don't know. Maybe. One could argue. Either way, doesn't matter. Doesn't happen. Uh, so, taking a look at it from the end zone angle here, get a much better idea of what's going on. They bring Irving in motion. They're going to hand the ball to him here. First things first. 93 beats Cody Mock off the snap, ends up getting inside. So Irving's going to have to maneuver around that. Does a great job of doing so. Actually, the more I look at it, it that's, this almost looks like it's by design. Almost like, yeah, it is. I, 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 okay. So yeah, Mock, his job is to turn 93 inside. And that's exactly what he's going to do here. So apologies to Cody Mock. I almost made it look like he did his job incorrectly. Uh, so he does a good job of beating Jones around here. And then he's going to play Tristan Wirfs close. He's going to press to the tackle. Why does he do that? Got to worry about 55 and 49. If you play him close, they're thinking, oh, this is a run to the left. So we're going to crash down this way. Irving's goal is to play this close and then explode right here through this gap that Graham Barton is about to create. However, 
he gets tripped up a little bit. You know, this guy that Wirfs was blocking gets some hands on him, has a nice play on him. On top of that, 94 is going to start to win here. You're going to see a DB come down from here and then a DB come over from here. That's going to result in Irving having to do some work on the fly. 77 is doing a great job here. You've still got a fantastic block from Graham Barton and then some nice work here by one of the receivers. I believe that's Chris Godwin. So he's just going to bounce this to the outside and just takes what he's given. Huge pickup. Really, really nice play. Run it back a little bit. I see it. The more I look at it, that was definitely designed by Mox, so my bad. But Draymond Jones does do a great job of firing into the backfield. A lot of guys probably are able to at least get in front of the running back and disrupt his path. Uh, but thankfully, Irving does a great job of avoiding that. Plays it close to the tackle, bounces it to the outside. This is the kind of stuff you want to see from a rookie, man. That type of vision, that's 10-year veteran vision. As a fan of the Chicago Bears, a team that currently employs DeAndre Swift, I'm so jealous. I would kill to have a running back that could see the field like that. You know, I didn't have the highest grade on Bucky Irving. I had a third round grade on him. Had nothing to do with his vision. You know, I loved his vision coming out. A lot more to do with his size and things of that nature, but this, this is some awesome stuff. I didn't love the pick for Tampa at the time because I, I really did think that Rashad White was going to be the clear-cut RB1. You're drafting Bucky Irving to be the RB2, and him and White had similar skill sets as, like, receiving backs. Irving's better. <laughs> like, at least through three weeks, Irving has been the better running back. So, you know, I wish I could go back and, and maybe foresee that. But either way, awesome stuff here from Bucky Irving on this run. All right, this is the very next play here. Not quite as fancy from Irving. but He's going to be lined up as a wide receiver. What's going to happen here is they're going to bring the tight end in motion to serve as a lead blocker. Make the handoff, toss it to him. He's got a lot of green in front of him. Makes a nice juke and ends up taking this up to the one yard line. He is short. His knee was down. We take a look from this angle to see how this all happened. Blocking ends up being beautiful, right? You get Tristan Wirfs washing a guy downfield. Chris Godwin here to set the edge is interesting. Uh, it ends up not paying off. 77 gets to the second level. Graham Barton's out on the move. Kate Otten's out on the move. You've got, uh, this is another tight end here lined up to take care of Cooper. The blocking's beautiful in this play. Blocking's, oh, that wasn't a tight end. It, it was a guard wearing 68. I'm blind. I was going to say, this is a fat tight end. <laughs> um, but yeah, the, the, the blocking here is great at the line of scrimmage. One thing that ends up happening, though, that isn't ideal, you get a double team block on a corner out here, and Buck Irving is going to take this inside because that's where the green is. You know, that's where the more open play is here. So he's got six one-on-one. -on -one. He's going to have to make a move have to cut on the inside of him does a great job getting inside unfortunately he does get brought down this is why i brought up earlier chris godwin sealing the edge here is interesting because that's nick benito it's a whole ass edge rusher not great he actually does a great job on initial contact i should give him more credit i guess if i'm gonna get mad at anybody maybe cody barton no that's not cody barton that's uh cody barton's a linebacker Graham Barton is who I'm thinking of, and Cody Mock is the guard. Goodness. It's Cody, ba no, that's Cody Martin from The Sweet Life of Zack and Cody. Goodness. Names are difficult, if that's not apparent. Uh, so maybe I should want Mock here to do a little bit more work, but I mean, Godwin sticks with him. He tries. You know, he, he's doing his best. But either way, really nice run there from Irving. Gets down to the one-yard line. Not quite a touchdown. Still a really nice run, nonetheless just burn the fuck out of my hand between takes so we're gonna see how this goes um but this is gonna be a quick one i just want to take a look at a simple little cut here from mr bucky irving god it hurts to click my mouse this is not good uh so you see he cuts in or he leads inside cuts to the outside really nice pickup this is like a third and one third and two situation and this cut with six getting in the backfield getting a basically free release Making that cut on them is the difference between having to punt and moving the chains in a game where they got molly whopped. There's nothing cooler than watching an, a running back set up their offensive lineman. I can't even think straight, dude. My hand hurts so bad. Uh, but but we, we charge on. I got to get this uploaded. I got to get this done. Uh, so we're going to see Irving 
set up one of his linemen here, which you really love to see. So right away, fires out of this hole. You got to deal with Singleton here. Here's the concern. Uh, you've got Barton climbing up, and then over here with 39, you've got somebody climbing up to take care of him as well. So what Irving's going to do is he's going to run this to the inside to keep Singleton in the lane of Barton. And then Barton, being the big, beautiful son of a bitch he is, is going to be able to get downfield and collapse on him. And that's going to give Irving, in theory, if uh, this is Cody Mock over here, if he can get up to the next level and take care of 39, that's going to give Irving a wide open lane. And what ends up actually happening here is Mock gets beat by the much quicker uh, DB there. You know, you can see right here, this DB is on the right side of Mock. Mock probably wanted to push him out and away. Instead, he's charging right into the lane where Irving wants to get to. However, on the bright side, he does play Singleton perfectly. Presses up against the, the lineman here. Singleton, or yeah, Alex Singleton is playing the inside shoulder of Graham Barton here, which means that Irving would be able to cut this upfield and deal with the two high safeties if it wasn't for Mock blowing his block. But, you know, I, I digress. Good run here. Uh, someone also comes from the other side of the line to help out here. Still, I, I like the vision. I like the, the trying to set up his blockers. It's very inspiring because it doesn't work on this play, but having that ability and knowing how to set up your blockers, like I said, it didn't work on this play, but it might work on the next one and the next one and the next one and so on and so forth and end up with a lot of really big runs for Irving. All right, we are going to see how the littlest move can make the biggest gain. I worded that poorly, but you understand what I mean. Little moves matter. Uh, so we're going to get Irving here against Washington. First week of the season. First of all, Washington is all over this play on the left side. You can see it's almost a miracle that Baker gets this handoff off. Great blocking by the second year tight end, Payne Durham. Uh, Got to shout out Payne Durham when I can. So they hand this ball to Irving. And Irving, his prerogative here is to set up Chris Godwin. I'm trying to get a good angle. So here you see, as he's taking this handoff, he sees a 2 one one situation. You've got one, two, one, one. That's bad. Numbers tell you that's bad. That's too many defenders for this blocker. So what does Irving see? Well, he sees Godwin coming up field to take care of this guy. So he's thinking to himself, okay. I need to give Godwin enough time to take care of this DB. And then I get a one-on-one -on -one with this DB. And I'm confident in my ability to beat that DB. So Irving is going to take this handoff and he does just the tiniest hezzy step right there. He's in the middle of it. Once this is clear, you know, once Payne Durham and the guy he is blocking are clear, he makes a tiny little hezzy step. And that gives Godwin enough time to get inside and make this block. You can see from the footwork this DB was even crashing inside. You know, he was trailing with his buddy there, hoping that this run was going to go inside. Irving says, nope, I'm taking it out. He's going to spring this to the outside. And that's going to be a huge pickup. That is a 30 yard run set up by Irving doing a little jig. Like, like he does a little, uh, a hop, a skip and a jump. And it's a 30 yard run just because that little move, giving Godwin enough time to get to his space and set a very, very key block on this run. And our last run of the day, really good execution, really good vision on this run. They're gonna bring Godwin in motion. You see right away the linebackers, you got Barton and Durham taking care of these two linebackers. You can see a hole start to develop up this way, right? There's a lane coming through. Tristan Wirfs is gonna take care of this guy. There's a lot of green grass. So how does Irving sell that? Because Irving needs to sell it. Because technically speaking, these two defenders here, they could very easily, you know, shed in this direction and clog that up. So Irving needs to make sure he thinks, or they think he's going that way. So they crash in that direction. How does he do that? Well, he sells the hell out of the run to the right. So you're going to see he takes up, takes off upfield, excuse me. And it really looks like he's going to be taking this to the right. I mean, by... by all metrics, all standards. He looks like he's going to the right. Even John Allen here, who's starting to beat his man a little bit, who could very easily blow up this run right in here. is like, oh, he's he's heading to the right. All right. Sounds good. I'm going to be away from the play. I can I can loaf a little bit. 
And then at the last second, Bucky Irving gets funky, presses his blockers, really fancy footwork to not trip over Payne Durham there, and gets upfield for a really solid gain. Uh, roughly a first down there, if not maybe a little short. Just a really, really good run there. Really good job manipulating the defenders with his blockers. And John Allen, you know, I mentioned he thought he was going inside. He could have very easily blown this run up. Instead, uh, if I can get the right pointer here, he gets turned all the way around. He's got a spin. He's got no idea what's going on. John Allen, one of the best defensive linemen in the National Football League, had no idea what was coming at him because of that really nice run from Bucky Irving in his first game. This is from week one. That is some really, really awesome work from the rookie. Met a chance on the throwback. This was, this was an ill-advised throw. What an unbelievable catch by Colt the Met. And he, and he cups it too. No movement when he hits the ground, tucked up against his shoulder. Wow. Using that.